Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see what is reactive programming. Reactive programming is a programming with asynchronous data streams. Uh, streams are nothing but a set of events which are ordered in time. For example, a time is a stream of events. So basically all these seconds and minutes and hours are all events, right? So these are all streams. So for example, tweets are also events. So these are events and the programming which is reacting on these events is called reactive programming. So Netflix, what they did is they saw this opportunity of reactive programming from Microsoft. So Microsoft used reactive programming internally uh, for their frameworks and they had used that in .NET. So and that was called reactive extensions Rx. Okay. So Netflix, what they saw, they saw this opportunity and they started using reactive programming in in their Netflix APIs. So, so there is something called Rx Java. So that is a Netflix API. So like that, there are lots of APIs which are available out there. And this is not a new concept which was created recently. So it was, if you see this particular reactive manifesto, which we see here, this was published in 2014. So there are lots of libraries which we can use for reactive programming. Uh, in general, what does reactive programming say is uh, systems are generally reactive when they have, when they are responsive. Uh, where um, they respond in timely manner. So for example, if you give a res request and it, the request should be resolved within like milliseconds or seconds. So if you have a REST API and the REST API should return your response within milliseconds or seconds. So that is what response responsive mean here. Uh, same way resilient. So how resilient your REST API or the um, system is to in terms of failure. So how is it handling the failure and how is it taking care of replication, isolation, delegation within the components. So that is the resilient part. Elasticity, um, how the system is responsive under varying workload. So if there are lots of uh, requests coming in at the same time, so how is the system taking care of that? And finally, the message driven part. So asynchronous messaging. So in case of reactive systems, the messaging will be asynchronous. Basically what uh, asynchronous means is uh, you send a request and you don't wait for the response. Instead, you just uh, register a callback to that particular request and the um, once the request is completed, the messages will be pushed to the callback method. So it, it, that that's the asynchronous messaging. Okay, so that is what reactive programming is all about. Um, so other things about reactive is the reactive uh, in, in case of uh, RxJS. So I will show you an example with RxJS. So if you see here, um, this is the uh, API which uh, Netflix has created. So if you see here, this is the GitHub link for the uh, ReactiveX Rx Java, which uh, Netflix has created. So they have also other versions of uh, uh, this particular API, Rx Groovy, Rx Closure and Rx Scala. So, so this is how you write basically. So I'll show you an example which I wrote, but um, how this Rx Java works is they work on the principle of observable de design pattern. So if you are uh, aware about the iteratable and the observable, so iteratable, I, I trouble is basically uh, when you want to pull data from a list or a collection. So we iterate, right? We iterate. What we basically do is we'll pull the data from the iterable and then we do a next and then we get the data and do something around that. So observable is when we push the data. So basically the um, server side, it, it's considered it as a uh, server side, right? So from there, the data is pushed for the client side so that the client doesn't have to wait for it. So whenever the data is available, the, the observable will push the data to us. And whenever there is an exception or, a, or if, the, um, complete, if the data is completed, if the streams are completed, then those will be notified back to the callback. So that is what our observable does. So that is what the same, um, this reactive programming is all about. And uh, the Rx Java does the same thing. So Netflix has implemented those observable patterns and they have come up with a functional style where you can use the observable uh, library to do something uh, which which is functional okay so what netflix defines uh, this particular uh, reactive uh, or the rx java is uh, it's a library for composing the uh, asynchronous and event based programs using observable sequences for the jvm and these are all based on reactive extension so if you see this particular diagram uh, this is what shows the observable pattern. Uh, you can just go through that. I will uh, drop the uh, link in the description below. So you can take a look at 
uh, what Netflix has to say about the observable and the implementation. Uh, now let's go to the example which I wrote. So if you see here what I have done is in the form. Uh, this is a basically a Spring Boot application. I have just added Rx Java Core. So this is the uh, dependency which we are using for using reactive programming from Netflix. So if you see here the um, group ID is com Netflix Rx Java and the artifact is Rx Java even core. The version number which I am using is 0.20.7. So this is going to this is nothing but a library uh, which you can use for doing reactive programming. Okay, so this is going to give an observable design pattern and the functional style. So let's go to the example. So what I am doing here is I'm just creating an observable object. So the class, this class is called React Example, and I'm just creating an observable object. Okay, and then and I'm uh, using this particular example, and I'm calling a get method. So uh, I'm just uh, writing a method called get get data, so that this gives me the observable interface for the user. So what I have done is I have created a model called users. So I, have, I am using Lombok. So Lombok is a compile time um, Pojo builder. So you can just annotate it with these and it automatically generates the Pojo. So I don't have to write the getters, setters and uh, the constructors and the two strings. All these are taken care by Lombok. So that is what I am uh, using here. If you see in the dependency I have added Lombok here. Okay, so that is what is done here. So I'm using uh, the users model. So I'm basically using uh, giving a list of uh, users to this particular get data. So I'm using a get users method where I'm just framing some object. So I'm just creating three objects with uh, name as Bob, Peter, and Chris, and then their salary as 10,000, 20,000, and 10,000 again. Okay. So it is just a static data which I'm passing to this particular observable. So what we are going to do here is we are going to create an observable pattern or a subscriber basically okay for every every subscribable action okay I'm going to check if it is subscribed or not so basically you can uh, control if the client has subscribed or not so what I uh, if you see here what I have done is I am creating an object of this observable and then I'm just saying subscribe so that is when this particular piece of code will be triggered so so that is why we are uh, checking if it is subscribed or unsubscribed you see if we see here what I'm doing is I'm checking if the subscriber is unsubscribe not unsubscribe basically subscribe so once it the user is subscribed what I'm doing is I'm getting the users list I'm streaming over that and I'm saying on every user call the subscriber dot on next so whenever I hit the subscriber dot on next the callback which I have registered to the subscriber will be called so if you see here how I register the callback is this is a callback so if you notice this is a callback okay so I, I need to do a observable dot subscribe so if I go to the implementation so this is coming from the observable class which is huge actually so this is coming from the observable class so there we have the subscribe method so the first argument is nothing but the if I go to the object the first argument is nothing but the on next which is basically the callback the second object is the on error and the third object is the on complete so whenever there is a callback uh, implementation call so for example here we did a on next so whenever you do a on next this will be hit so I'm just printing it out so whenever um, on next is called I'm just printing and then I'm just sleeping for one second just to just for us to show how the uh, reactive programming works or the callback works so the next argument is the uh, error so whenever we do on error what I'm doing is I'm just printing uh, saying exception and then I'm just printing the exception which we received and finally the third argument is I'm just printing out completed so uh, what I'm doing is after I iterated all the list I'm just calling the on completed method so that is when we get notified saying it's completed so what we are doing here is we are creating an observable from the get data and using the observable we are calling the subscribe and then we are registering a callback we are registering a error method and then we are finally registering a completed method inside the get data we are creating an observable stream basically we are creating an observable stream and inside that for every subscriber subscribed action so for we are checking if it is subscribed or not if it is subscribed uh, the for every users list we are streaming and calling the subscriber dot on next and that is received in the callback and then we are sleeping for one minute sorry one second and then finally once all the uh, stream is completed 
we are just calling the on completed so let's run this particular program so what i expect is for every one second i am going to print the users i need to get the users printed and finally i need to get a completed so basically if you see the subscribe method so this is an asynchronous call if you see here um, it so whenever there is a stream which has been called on on next we get the response back in the call back here so if you see here if you notice here the users bob will rerun again i didn't notice when you see, if you see here uh, bob got printed peter got printed chris got printed and finally completed got printed uh, and there was a one second delay because we had a delay here okay so if you see here these are the callbacks the first three uh, print statements are the callbacks and the final one is the completed callback so whatever we received here we are going to print that is what we did uh, now let's check if there is an exception right so what if there is an exception on the uh, when we did a stream okay so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to forcefully trigger an error exception so basically on completed and on error are terminal statements basically it will complete or end the stream so if you are aware about java 8 streams you would have seen right for each and other statements are all terminating statements so these statements end the stream so if you see here if you notice here when the bob got printed and when i called the on error there was an exception i just said wow exception and the execution got completed the program got terminated basically so that is a terminating command so on error and on completed are terminating commands so it will never proceed uh, after that so that is why so if there is an exception or if we handle something in the exception here you can call the on error so basically what we are saying here is the client should be uh, independent of how we handle the uh, exception so the, the client shouldn't see the exception the client should be able to use the callbacks and handle how the exception is received so that is what we are saying here so the client did not get any exception instead we are just calling an on error saying okay there is an exception you handle it however you want okay that is that is what um, this particular reactive or the subscribe method is using okay so this is this is uh, uh, one of the example of how uh, you do reactive programming uh, so instead of using a user st uh, list stream here we can uh, call an external uh, service here so for example let's say if you want to stream the twitter data so you can call the twitter service here and then you can stream the data here and then you can filter it out and call the on next for the subscriber so based on that you can process that data and push it to the ui or do whatever you want with that stream data okay so basically this is how you implement reactive programming so um, the client side you have a subscriber you just subscribe and the observable will be streaming the data and then pushing the data back to the callback so you can handle that callback here and do whatever you want you can again call some other uh, service or something like that uh, but this is the typical example of how you implement a, a reactive programming okay um, that's it for this particular video uh, if you like the video do subscribe and like or comment if you have any queries uh, meet you again in the next video thank you